Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first annual Battlefield 4 Awards. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, most kind, and your first award tonight is Best Map. Let's take a look at our top five. Right, so at number five we have Pearl Market. This is by far the best close action map in Battlefield 4. Metro lockers, they're just slaughter fest with alleys and choke points. Pearl Market lets you get some close in fighting, but has a variety of routes, alleyways, levels, widths. Got vehicle options, okay, limited to Amtraks and motorbikes and things like that, but you can get around the map fast if you need to, You've got a bit of armour, but it's an infantry map at its heart. There's no helicopters, it's just fun. Okay, it may not be a map you play for hours and hours and hours, but this is the best map for just infantry on infantry close range combat. And it's quite sad that there are really only two good close quarters urban maps in Battlefield 4. The second one you're going to see later in this list. There was no close quarters expansion for Battlefield 4. The best thing you can say about Pearl Market is that there's nothing wrong with the design of it at all. I can't really fault Pearl Market. The only problem this map is, is that it does get a bit repetitive if you try playing it for a long period of time. Because it is very similar in its layout. A lot of the buildings are the same pattern, maybe just switched around. So it is a bit samey in places, but it is a very well designed map. So that's Pearl Market, my fifth favourite map. Coming in at number four, we have Propaganda. Again, this is a Dragon's Teeth map, and Dragon's Teeth was the first DLC for Battlefield 4 where I thought they actually understand what people want from maps. China Rising was really a non event. Second Assault and Naval Strike were both horrible DLCs. Dragon's Teeth and Propaganda gave me some hope that in future we might get decent DLCs for Battlefield games. The actual layout and design of Propaganda is almost perfect, and I say almost because there is a big elephant in the room with Propaganda, and that's the spawn points. The main team spawn points on Conquest are horrible. This is a map that is notorious for spawn camping and it's just down to the design and location of the spawn points. The rest of the map is amazing. It's got different fields in different areas. So you've got the little village side, you've got the railway track and the open avenue, you've got the little military bases and the statue complex. It's a very well designed and thought out map except for the spawn point. That is why Propaganda comes in at number four and not number one. If the spawn points were better on Propaganda and the layout of the map was better around those spawn points, Propaganda would be on the top of my list. But it's those occasional frustrating games where you get spawn camp that means Propaganda drops down the list. Now here on the screen you can see a lot of action and it's very exciting. The reason there's a lot of action at the statue is that one team is getting spawn camped. Now unfortunately it's one of the features I like most about propaganda that leads to the camping and that is there's no air vehicles, there's no jets, there's no helicopters, it's all based on the ground. So maybe propaganda needs a few more fast moving dirt bikes or quad bikes in the spawn point so that the team can try and burst out rather than having to fight and grind their way out. Fortunately the camping is actually quite rare. If you get a bad team though this map can be a nightmare. Usually though propaganda is an absolute dream to play. It flows, there's different locations for different styles of play. It's one of those maps where every class can have a role and every class can actually do a job. There's enough open spaces and long firing lines for recons to get in there. Spawn beacons are really useful on propaganda because there's no helicopters. 
and engineers have got the tanks to deal with and the armor support well support have got lots of nice arcs of fire for their lmgs and of course if you've got recons and engineers and assaults all having a job to do then the support has got a job supplying them with ammunition. And when you haven't got helicopters to leapfrog enemy troops, those frontline revives become really important and the salts have got a proper role. And for those reasons, you're prepared to overlook the sometimes dodgy spawns and propaganda comes in at number four. The map at number three is actually a vanilla map. Now I know it didn't come out in 2014, but it actually works in 2014. So my number three map is Flood Zone. Flood Zone has always been one of those maps that was really good fun in Conquest, but it was terrible at Rush. Now when DICE Los Angeles went back and redid the vanilla maps for Rush, this map became brilliant for both. So yes, this is a vanilla map. No, it wasn't released in 2014, but DICE Los Angeles went back and made these maps and even the game work properly in 2014. Let's face it, in 2013, Flood Zone didn't really work as a map because the game didn't really work and it was awful for Rush. So Flood Zone 2014 is number three on my list. And the reason it's that high is because they just threw everything at Flood Zone. It's got armor, it's got attack boats, it's got helicopters, but it all seems to work. There's only one thing on this map that doesn't really work and that's why it's at number three and that's these buildings in the centre. They're an unnecessary sniper perch with no way of getting to them other than the helicopters. Now I don't mind tall buildings and sniper perches on maps but the problem with these ones is there's no way other than the helicopters of getting up to the top and there's really no way of fighting back against the spawn beacon up there. So for me, this is another one of those maps that's let down by one little design flaw. If those buildings weren't there, or weren't so tall, or there was another way of accessing the roof, then Flood Zone could be my number one map, but unfortunately, it isn't. Having said all that, this map is great fun to play in both Conquest and Rush and Domination. In fact, in almost every mode, this map works well. It's quite a long and narrow map, but not too narrow, and you've got routes down both sides for vehicles and boats. It's really well thought out and designed, and I love playing on Flood Zone. Flood Zone is the only map in which the Levolution actually has an effect on the gameplay. This is how I was hoping Battlefield 4's Levolution was going to go. We had the big tower in Siege of Shanghai coming down. We had Flood Zone getting flooded when the dam breached. Levolution turned out to be a bit of a damp squib, but Flood Zone did Levolution really well. So it's got great variety, good map design, different lanes, but it's got those buildings in the middle. So Flood Zone comes in at number three. Coming in at number two is one of the newest maps we have, but not the one that most people would pick. For me, number two is Hammerhead. So a lot of people I know will be saying, why is Hammerhead in your list but not Hangar 21? And here's a spoiler, Hangar 21 isn't number one, but Hammerhead is number two. And the reason is simple. Hammerhead is a much more balanced map than Hangar 21. In fact, Hammerhead is probably the best balanced map in the entire of Battlefield 4. It's the only map that throws everything at you but still works. Hammerhead has attack jets, attack helicopters, it's got tanks, it's got infantry fighting vehicles, it's got snowmobiles, it's got randomly spawning attack helicopters, it's got transport helicopters, it has everything, but it still works even if you're playing as infantry. Every capture point on Hammerhead has a different feel. You've got the fishing village, you've got the logging camp, you've got the warehouse, you've got the submarine pen. Each point has a different style and a different play style. Playing inside the submarine pen is brilliant close quarters action but outside you've got ample opportunities for sniping and for engineers to take out vehicles or even just driving tanks or 
playing in helicopters, you can do absolutely everything on this map and nothing feels overpowered. When I was compiling this list, I couldn't work out which should be number two and which should be number one. And in fact, the only reason the next map is number one is because I've played it longer and had more fun over more hours. But I have a sneaky suspicion that Hammerhead is actually the best map in Battlefield 4. It's just underrated. Lots of people rave about Hangar 21, but from the final stand DLC, Hammerhead is a far better map. It does everything you need it to do. But because I haven't played it as much, Hammerhead currently comes in at number two of my top maps. And that just leaves us with number one. And this is the map that I've had most fun on in Battlefield 4. And it is Zavod 311. Ever since Battlefield 4 was launched, Zavod 311 has been my favorite map. It's one of those maps that just gets under your skin. It's got a bit of everything. True, it doesn't have amazing levolution, but when you consider just about every wall of the main buildings can be knocked down, every wall of the standing buildings at B can be knocked down, even the buildings around the tower can have all their walls blown out. There is an awful lot of levolution in here. Even trees, you can knock them out of your way for a better view. And when Dice LA came back and redid the rush on Zavod 311, it became brilliant for rush as well. This is by far my favourite map in Battlefield 4. In fact, there's a server that plays nothing but Zavod 311 and I'm on that a lot. Now I said this about propaganda and it applies here. You can play any role you like on Zavod 311 and play with an actual purpose. If you're an assault you can revive and medic around the central buildings and hold the two points there. If you're playing engineer, well there's lots of tanks and helicopters around to go at. As support you can have a field day with an LMG in some of the lanes there are on this map. Now it's not lanes that you're funneled into and have to go down, but there are really good places for an LMG to go to work. And Recons, well you've got an awful lot of opportunities for sniping on this map, either from the woods or from the top of these buildings. Now I know on Flood Zone I said tall buildings in the middle are bad, but these ones, they're not too tall that you can't snipe at people on them and they have multiple ways of getting up to them. You don't need to go in a helicopter to get onto those buildings. There's the pipe work to run up, there's ladders. These buildings I have no problem with. Yes, snipers up there can be annoying, but you can get up onto those roofs as infantry, you can use helicopters, or you can snipe them off those roofs. In fact, the roofs are a really good battleground for this map. The only slightly dodgy point on this map has been the radar tower, but that was taken out of play, really, in Rush by the movement of the MCOMs, and in Conquest, it only really dominates one point. It's not as if it's somewhere you can go and snipe across the entire map. I just think that Zavod gives you an almost perfect mix when it comes to the areas around the capture points and the areas that the MCOMs are positioned in Rush. In many ways, this map is like Hammerhead. It's got the central buildings, which are kind of like the submarine pens, and you've got more open areas around them and every capture point has a different feel to it. If you decided to build a snow map based on Zavod, you would get Hammerhead. Hammerhead, however, is a bit wider and it's not as good as a rush map as Zavod is, which is why Zavod is number one and Hammerhead is number two. In fact, I don't think there is a bad game mode on Zavod. Team Deathmatch is great fun on Zavod. Frustrating, but fun. So the best map in Battlefield 4 is Zavod 311. Unless something else comes out in 2015 to beat it. Thank you so much for watching this best map of Battlefield 4 presentation. Is this the end of the story? Who knows what will come in 2015? But this isn't the end for the Battlefield 4 Awards. Coming in the new year, we have... Best Shooty Thing. 
looking at the top five guns, gizmos and gadgets for bringing death to your opponents. But for now, thanks so much for watching the Battlefield 4 Awards.